Welcome everyone to today's CSI webinar program. My name is Maya Knott, CSI Education Manager, and today's webinar is Where to Find Certification Tips and Advice, Support for CSI Leaders. We have a wonderful group of panelists for you today. We are joined today by Mr. Raymond Yee Gaines, FCSI, CCS, AIA, the founding principal of the Gaines Group, PLC, and an architecture and design firm in Charlottesville, Virginia. In 30 plus years in the construction industry, Mr. Gaines has sold building materials and run a, constru a construction company prior to establishing an architecture practice in 1987. Having come, having come through school in the midst of the energy crisis in the 1970s, Mr. Gaines' practice has always been geared towards sustainability and preservation of resources. He has been involved in CSI leadership since the early 1990s. Also joining us is Mr. John S. Rickert, FCSI, CCS, AIA, Lead AP, and he is from Rockford, Illinois, and earned his Bachelor of Architecture and later Master's of Architecture degree from Montana State University in Bozeman. Mr. Rickert has worked with Leo A. Daly as a production architect for several significant projects in Saudi Arabia and the Eastern United States. He established an architectural department for a small civil and structural engineering firm in Omaha and worked for Shemmer Associates as a senior architect and project manager. Mr. Rickert is a fellow of CSI and served as president for the Nebraska chapter, region director for the ne Nebraska chapter, North Central Region Education Chair, and as region district coordinator for the North Central Region Board and as president of the region. Also, we have Mr. David A. Willis, CSI, CDT, CCCM, um, and he has been associated with the concrete block manufacturing industry for 40 plus years and currently is employed by the Basilite Concrete Products, LLC, and as an architectural sales representative. M Mr. Willis's education includes a BS in the Business Administration from Cal the California Polytechnic at University, San Luis Obispo, Certified Consultant of Concrete Masonry from the National Concrete Masonry Association, and Construction do uh, Document Technologist from CSI. Mr. Willis has spent time each year working with students from various state universities and is very active in the Construction Specification Institute and is currently serving as the CSI West Region President. Um, studying has also been initiated to become a lead associate. And today's webinar will be led by Mr. Jack P. Morgan, CSI, CCS, CCCA, AIA, and CARB Skip. Mr. Morgan has more than 30 years of experience as a licensed architect. Uh, Mr. Morgan is the winner of Member of the Year and Fran Schroeder Memorial Awards. He is the former chapter treasurer and president of the Indi Indianapolis chapter and has served on the CSI Education Committee and as treasurer for the Great Lakes region. Mr. Morgan currently serves on the CSI Audit Committee, Program Education Membership and Certification Committees for the Indianapolis chapter, and as President-Elect of the Great Lakes region. Um, it is now my pleasure to hand over today's presentation to Mr. Jack Morgan. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. I uh, want to appreciate uh, you taking your time out of your busy schedules today to to uh, join us in some, uh, we hope will be some helpful information for you as region leaders and chapter leaders uh, to uh, help make your job a little bit better. Um, the picture you see in front of you is a picture that was taken at, a, at the annual meeting that was held last uh, June in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Greg Markling is our current CSI president, joining uh, David, myself, and John Rickard. Uh, and uh, we were presenting different ideas. Uh, each of the region leaders came up with a different facet of helping, helping to uh, improve the CSI experience. And what you're going to hear today is our uh, uh, thoughts on one of those areas. And this is uh, uh, the ideas that we're talking about. We decided that uh, there were several different areas of the CSI experience talk uh, that were mentioned and uh, uh, elaborated on, but we felt that there was a need for, in the uh, professional development, which is education and certification, uh, that uh, there needed to be some uh, more promotion of the CDT certificate. So uh, we came up with three objectives uh, to promote that every chapter has access to CDT certificate prep course tools. 
uh, increase the number of candidates sitting for the CDTA certificate exam, and then finally provide programming resources to chapters to increase the quality of programs being presented and to create a region speakers bureau related to the CSI speakers directory. Maya? Okay. All right, that's a picture of myself there uh, at the Denver meeting doing one of the exercises that we were talked about. Uh, let's, we're going to talk now about promote that every chapter has access to uh, CDT prep tools. Now this is our first question and uh, as you can see here, uh, the uh, does your chapter have a CDT certificate prep program? Uh, we're trying to get a gauge on how many of the people attending today have a chapter that has this program uh, and several chapters do not. So we're trying to see uh, of those that are attending today how many do. So please yes, uh, vote yes or no or unsure. Um, and of course, we don't get the vote here. So uh, go ahead, Maya. And then we'll collect okay. those and uh, we can report those later. Okay. See about five more seconds. And we'll All get right. back to the PowerPoint. Okay, there's the poll question. Know. Okay, so that looked very overwhelmingly uh, affirmative uh, from what I saw. It looks like 94% uh, of those that are attending responded affirmatively and no with none unsure. So uh, that's 100%. So uh, of those uh, 6%, uh, hopefully uh, this is something that will help that. Uh, at least uh, find different sources uh, than just have a, a prep program. So let's go ahead to the next slide, Maya. Okay, again on the first uh, point, uh, we're trying to inform the chapter presidents, cer certification chairs, and the CDT candidates of the tools available for the CT CDT exam. Uh, also, part of this is to compare the statistical data of the chapter CDT candidates pass rate for fiscal 13, which is the current year we're in, to fiscal year 14, which is next year, with a baseline of fiscal year 12, which we just went through. Uh, and then compare the statistical data of webinar attendance, uh, again, the uh, and we're talking in this case uh, certification prep webinars, attendance for fiscal year 13 and fiscal year 14. All right, Maya. So we're to try to achieve those objectives, we're comparing the fiscal year 12 chapter test results versus the fiscal year 13 and fiscal year 14 test results by using available chapter annual reports. As many of you know, or some maybe don't know, that each chapter is, re is required to file the CSI at the end of the fiscal year a report of all the activities that the chapter did, including uh, how many took the CDT or any other certification exam and uh, those that, uh, that passed. Um, and then the certification chair's activity uh, is that uh, uh, for each chapter is that uh, we would like for you to report this also to the region certification chair how many of your candidates passed. I believe it goes directly to CSI but maybe not to the region so we'd like to get a little more communication between the region and the chapter as well as uh, the chapter to the CSI. Yes, next, next slide Maya. Alright, this is another poll question. How many people attended your preparation programs this year? Uh, and as you can see, there's uh, five choices. Uh, I don't know that we had, uh, 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 and then I guess we just uh, see how, how we do there. But uh, uh, again, that, that requires that you know a little bit about uh, what you've done uh, up to now. Uh, some, some chapters do not have a fall program, but it, most of them have the spring program. Uh, but some do have both. 
So this would include uh, both exams, I believe, if you do offer both. Great. Thank you, everyone, for uh, responding. And the poll is now closed, and you'll see the results there on your screen. OK. Uh, looks like, overwhelmingly, we have 1 to 25, which uh, is what I expected. Um, and some 7%, 25 to 50. That was a great, great turnout. Uh, and then not available, uh, I guess, is uh, those that uh, don't, aren't sure. So uh, I believe uh, that's hopefully part of what we're trying to do here is to make sure that people are sure of what's going on as far as certification results and uh, also uh, as far as uh, how many people attended the uh, prep courses. Oh, Eric Maya? So what chapters need to do is uh, work with the region certification chairs to tell the CDT candidates about the prep tools, which we will go into here in a minute. And then the certification chairs activity is to coordinate presentation of this webinar to the CDT candidates. And there is a link there to YouTube uh, that uh, sort of reiterates what we're going to be talking about here. Uh, but uh, I think the more we talk about it, the, the hopefully the better it will be and more clear it will be. Uh, this picture is uh, a former Northwest Region Director, Lauren Berry, uh, FCSI, that uh, at the Denver meeting uh, talking about some of the different objectives that uh, uh, some of the other regional leaders talked about. So next slide, Maya. All right, so we're going to go now to the uh, web page of csinet.org and find out what tools are there. Um, some of the certification chairs primarily have maybe already looked here, but maybe not all. But what you do is you go to the page, and it opens up, and you'll notice along the top there is the certification link. You click on that, and then it automatically there's several choices below that. Uh, you want to click, in this case, the CDT, which uh, then leads you to the CDT uh, exam information, uh, including the CDT exam prep, which is in the right, and being clicked there as we, as we speak. Uh, and then click that. And then it leads to all these different options and opportunities for candidates to uh, pursue. Uh, the one that's highlighted, uh, and you can see there all the selections, the one that's uh, in the large diagram is uh, the CSI CDT 101, which is a, a free PowerPoint that uh, the candidate can view, presented by Leo Roscoe FCSI. Uh, and it's updated each year. Uh, it's a, a great thing. It tells a little bit about what the CDT is, which we'll also talk about here in this presentation. Uh, and, and then also uh, uh, how to mentally approach the exam, how to register, uh, also the fact that this is a computer generated uh, exam, how to uh, register with the company administering that, and uh, and and so forth. So it's a great, great source and a great primer for uh, anyone interested in taking the CDT. Then below here we can touch on some of these points. Uh, the uh, first one is the free C CDT candidate handbook. Uh, this is a downloadable uh, link that uh, is a PDF that you can download uh, basically telling the structure of the exam and what each of the points uh, carries or what they were hoping to uh, cover. Uh, then also a CDT boot, boot camp registration form. Uh, a boot camp is a live presentation uh, that uh, does cost some money to uh, partake in, but it's, uh, it's something that uh, is, I think, uh, it's an intensive uh, sit-down session that uh, is uh, very uh, helpful, those that uh, do attend. Uh, just uh, for your information, uh, you, it's $160 for the CSI member and uh, $199 for non-members. Again, you don't have to be a CSI member to take the CDT, but it helps in the, in the financial part because it's a savings if you are a member. 
So uh, it's an intense, uh, uh, basically, uh, live presentation, and it's uh, just uh, something that uh, is uh, very, uh, uh, people that have taken it have uh, very, been very favorable. The next one there is the CDT study workbook. Uh, this is a downloadable PDF. Uh, it does cost some money, but not very much. It's about $20. And uh, it, is, it goes into more depth than the study guide does or the candidate handbook. Uh, the, uh, it actually has uh, several uh, terms that are identified. It has quizzes. Uh, and it also goes into much more detail than the uh, handbook, the candidate handbook does. Uh, I also, as a, an aside, I was a member of the Education Committee last year that uh, uh, put this together. So very proud of that accomplishment. And uh, it's a very uh, valuable resource. And I, we've already used it for the uh, fall classes that we had here in Indianapolis. Then there's a CSI web-based CDT prep program. Uh, it's an on-demand webinar. Uh, that uh, essentially goes over the uh, fundamentals and formats of the construction documents. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it, uh, it's a PowerPoint that uh, uh, is, uh, there is some cost for this, uh, but it's very, uh, very reasonable. Uh, and then the next uh, next one is uh, the CSI chapter certification prep courses. Now, of course, that was one of our, our goals is to make sure that uh, people know where the tools are to take these courses. And uh, as, as with the, with the poll question, most of the people uh, on our call today have a program in place. Uh, well, we want to make sure that uh, those that uh, have them want to be recognized by CSI. So we invite you to uh, uh, certification chairs especially to make sure that the CSI net has the latest and greatest updated information about when you're offering your, your classes, if there's any expense, and the contact person to find out more information. Uh, that uh, is something that uh, Again, communication and updating information is always uh, something we try to look at. There's there's the link there on the CSI net. Uh, basically, you can put in uh, what's what chapter you are. Registration uh, doesn't have to be the certification chair, but it usually is the the one that's registering this. And then you can check all the ones that are uh, uh, applicable. Uh, we're talking today about the CDT, of course, realizing that there are three certification exams also, CCS, CCCA, CCPR, uh, but you need to pass the CDT to take any of those, so that's why we're concentrating on the CDT today. Um, and then uh, when the dates and times are and so forth, all the pertinent information and then the location uh, where that is. So. Uh, just uh, keep that updated. Uh, it makes it much easier for everyone involved. All right, Maya, let's go back to the uh, other uh, page that showed you some of the other options. There we go. Um, the uh, CDT 101 for candidates. Uh, that, again, you can download the uh, PowerPoint that's shown uh, as uh, the uh, as a live, or not a live, but it's an on-demand webinar. Uh, and I don't believe there's a charge for that. Um, the, uh, but I believe it's uh, something that uh, will help. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, several electronic uh, ways to communicate, uh, ask other cert CSI certificated, certified professionals in the CSI group on LinkedIn. Uh, and also with Facebook, uh, we have on CSI Net several forums which deal with the various exams that are offered. Uh, in this case, you'd want to be looking for the CDT. And uh, there are people that uh, discuss, and uh, you can, if you have a question, you can usually uh, list it there, and usually you'll, someone will answer that pretty quickly. 
And then something that's very handy uh, is you can download what are called project delivery flashcards, uh, either for the iTunes, uh, the Apple products, or uh, uh, for Droid, Android, uh, either way, whatever equipment you have. Uh, there is a nominal charge for that. It's only five dollars, uh, but it's a very reasonable uh, cost for what it is. Uh, plus, you can also, uh, if you want hard copy flashcards, in other words, actual paper ones, uh, for twenty dollars, you can get that one. Uh, uh, also, uh, you can order those, and then what they do is they ask sample questions. And I'm not saying that these are representative of any that would be on the exam, but they're a good, good uh, way to get yourself indoctrinated in sort of how the rationale is of taking an exam, and especially the questions of the exam. So that uh, is always uh, helpful. Uh, and then uh, you can ask CSI Direct a question about uh, the exam itself, and uh, usually there's someone online. Uh, uh, that will uh, uh, be able to answer that to you. So, so there are several several tools as you can see. Um, now, one that's not listed here, but it, it occurred to me that this is a very valuable source, is that uh, uh, you can always ask someone in your chapter that has that uh, uh, credential that you're wanting uh, their opinions of the exam. Uh, I believe that's always a great source, uh, especially if they've taken it recently. Uh, you know, recently we changed to a computer-based format, and uh, it helps tremendously because you find out how you did on it immediately after you've taken it, uh, versus uh, the old way with the paper and the pen pencil. It took several weeks to uh, get your results back, so it was. Uh, uh, not not the best. It's it's a lot better now. So uh, so there are various of the tools, and again, this is a repeat of, of what uh, what we had. Uh, my, you can keep on sliding some of those down. I believe there, uh, but we are ready. I believe for our next poll question, or I guess we have questions. I'm sorry. Uh, Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the next. What percentage of participants in your certification prep programs were CSI members? And uh, there's different listings there. Uh, and uh, I'd like to see uh, what what happens there. Uh, again, you don't have to be a CSI member to uh, partake in the CSI CDT exam, but it, it does help you uh, financially if you are. Okay. All right. Thank you. And those results will now appear on your screen. It looks like uh, the majority is uh, almost 50%, 25 to 50%, uh, with 25% uh, uh, being second. So uh, it's very interesting. Uh, and we actually 13%, almost all unanimously uh, CSI members. So uh, that's, that's very encouraging. I think, again, hopefully part of this reason for this webinar is to promote the uh, value of this exam and uh, how it can help uh, your uh, professional uh, career in taking it and leading on to uh, other things and also just talking the same language as other people in the construction industry. All right, Maya, we've talked about that. That's the flashcards. And I believe we've talked about that. So, are there any other questions that we've we've come through the first part here? Remember, you can submit your questions through the chat function. Um, we do have some questions about how chapters receive um, results about individual candidates. Um, and I know that's something that people have specific questions about, um, and I think what we'll do is send out, uh, get a response from our certification um, 
manager and send that out on um, that information out directly. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go on to the next part then. All right, our second part uh, is to increase the number of candidates sitting for the CDT certificate exam. And this was uh, organized by John S. Rickard, FCSI, CCS, AIA, Lead AP. Um, and uh, that's a picture of his, his face uh, himself at a recent uh, CSI gala. Uh, but uh, I believe it's, uh, uh, again, we're trying to promote uh, the exam as something that's worth a person's, uh, a person's uh, uh, time to uh, pursue. Yes, Maya, let's, let's next go to the next one. So, okay, another poll question. How many of your members sat for the CDT uh, exam? Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming that uh, this is CSI members. Uh, and there's four choices there. give about 15 more seconds. Okay. All right, thank you everyone. The poll is now closed and you can see the results on your screen. Overwhelmingly 88% uh, uh, up to 25%. So it looks like uh, even uh, uh, six percent, fifty percent, and seventy-five, or another six percent. So, it looks like most of the people that uh, take the exam are not CSI members. And you know, no, I, I think it's one of the best places to promote what CSI is about uh, through the uh, trying to go through the various aspects of this exam. So, all right, thank you. Let's go to the next next part. Okay. Promotion of the CDT certificate. Uh, well, we need to define what the CDT certificate is. Uh, of course, CDT stands for Construction Document Technologist, and it is a it is a uh, basic. Uh, it's a comprehensive overview for anyone who writes, interprets, enforces, or manages construction documents. Project architects, contractors, contract administrators, materials suppliers, and manufacturers representatives are all realizing the advantages of being the CDTs. And essentially that is because they know how to handle construction documents and they speak the same language. So it's, it's just something that makes sense if you're talking the same language, you will communicate and less errors and less problems in the field. So it's, uh, it's something that's really a no-brainer, but, uh, and, you know, another, I think, advantage of that is that uh, I've heard of uh, different uh, manufacturers asking their product representatives that to uh, at least uh, pass the CDT as uh, to show that they are at, at good at what they're doing, and uh, and I think that says something when when you visit an office uh, and you have a CDT after your name, uh, it's just something that shows that you've taken the trouble to uh, get it right. So it's something that uh, I think will will help uh, not only your career but everyone else that you're involved with. All right, the history of the certification exams is, is kind of an interesting one. Uh, and I, I want to credit Cheryl Dodd Hansen for this information. And it's very interesting. Uh, back in the 70s, CS, uh, CSI uh, was trying to organize the various specifiers that belong to the organization. And they wanted to uh, evaluate the competency of, of the specification writers. Uh, so they came up with a program called the Certified Construction Specifier Program, CCS, which uh, we, we do have today. Uh, and by 78, uh, 
500 specifiers were granted the right to indicate through their qualifications the use of CCS after their name. But then it was felt that, uh, okay, well, CCS and specifiers are great, but not everyone wants to be a specifier. But there's many things about being a specifier that will help other people in the construction industry. So in, in 85, the Institute Board approved a program of examination of individuals uh, and, uh, in construction and allied industries to assist the specifiers in preparation of project specifications and also use construction documents. Um, and this was uh, originally called a certificate program. Uh, the name was changed in 89 to the Construction Documents Technology Program, which it is today. Uh, and then in 1993, the Construction Document Technologist exam uh, became the prerequisite for the higher level certifications. I mentioned those before, the Certified Construction Specifier, the Certified Construction Contract Administrator, CCCA, and then the uh, Certified Contract Product Representative, the CCPR. Um, and the first year it was offered separately in 93. There were a thousand, over a thousand candidates and over 415 successful CDT certificates in, all over the country. And then uh, between 1993 and 2012, over more than 25,000 candidates have taken the CDT exam. So it's been a very, very popular uh, vehicle to help improve not only your career, but also to uh, improve the construction industry. So that's, um, I believe, uh, a good, good overview of that. And then there are... Um, uh, the next thing is is the elements of the study sessions and exam. Uh, the exam is a multiple choice. I've mentioned that before. It, it is a construction generated. Um, sorry, let's see. Uh, uh, it's a. Uh, uh, it's. Administered by Prometrics, which is the same persons that administer the LEED AP exam and uh, the uh, NCARB's uh, ARE exam, so it's a well-known company. Uh, the CDT exam uh, basically goes over six points. Uh, it's, it's fundamentals, planning and pre-design, design, which is the largest percentage, uh, procurement, construction and post-construction. So uh, study sessions usually uh, break those down into, into various points and you are graded with each of those six and at the, at the end of taking the exam you are you're, you're scored. Basically a successful score is 75 percent and uh, there are a hundred questions. There's 20 uh, questions that are profiled in addition, but it takes two hours to take. So it, uh, it, it tells you where you were good and where you weren't so good, and if you fall short of the 75%, you can uh, always take it again. So uh, it's, uh, and it's, uh, and you can always look this up again on CSI Net for more information than what I'm doing at here. Uh, and then why will your company benefit from your certificate? Well, I mentioned that different manufacturers have wanted the, uh, their product representatives to have at least a minimum of CDT. Um, it, it just shows that uh, you do know your stuff. And I believe any company that has a CDT working for them should be confident in the fact that uh, you know how to handle construction documents and there will be less errors and uh, more, uh, hopefully, uh, understanding of what's going on in a construction project through design, uh, pre-design, uh, into uh, bidding, construction, and even uh, after uh, the building is occupied. It's, uh, it's something that uh, is very beneficial. All right, Maya? So, Part of what we're, we're promoting here is promotion of the certificate using the points that I've just illustrated. Uh, 
we would like to promote the benefits of certification to other allied groups such as AIA, ASID, USGBC, engineering groups, and owners groups. Uh, at various co-meetings that uh, you may have, uh, have a little certification minute uh, giving an illustration of a, a benefit of taking the CDT and uh, maybe even an example of, uh, of what uh, uh, someone that it was a CDT helped in a project. Uh, and then also, as we're saying here, are other sub-consultants the cause of issues during construction bidding and during construction because their documents are not following the elements of proper format? We're hoping that the uh, by taking the CDT certificate exam, uh, that uh, there won't be any improper uh, formats. I, I have heard, though, of some companies that are still clinging to the old 16 division master format, uh, which is uh, obviously the way specifications are organized and other uh, elements uh, of the construction uh, uh, documents. But uh, that is as old as uh, as. Uh, 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 buggy whips and of course they still had buggy whips but they're not used very much so the point is that uh, we want to make sure that everyone's on the same page as I've said all right Maya. again uh, as an additional promotion of certificate uh, we want to promote to university and colleges uh, by offering programs to architectural and engineering students uh, to really take the CDT exam or the uh, prep courses to their logical conclusion, they really should be uh, administered uh, as a college course. Uh, but not everyone can, and uh, most aren't. But at least uh, that way, not only will the information be disseminated, but also uh, there'll be credit uh, gained by the students, as well as an understanding of uh, uh, the commonality of language uh, through the construction industry. Same for technical colleges, uh, technical support and BIM services. Of course, BIM is very much uh, the ongoing thing now in, in uh, construction and design. Uh, and, and of course, it, it, it follows along with uh, the uniformat, CSI's uniformat uh, uh, format. And uh, it's uh, uh, you learn about what uniformat is through the certification program. So it's uh, something that uh, uh, at least you'll be understanding of uh, when they say uh, what, a, what a shell is, you will know what, uh, what part of uniformat that is. All right, man. So what regions need to do is to promote the certification training opportunities to chapter representatives. Uh, whether that be the uh, uh, certification chairs uh, or the presidents or anyone else that uh, wants to take up that, uh, that banner. Uh, contact chapter chairs to promote getting good programs and certification uh, promotion and making sure the quality program presenters are available. Uh, that, uh, that last one is very key because uh, it could be the greatest message, but if you don't have someone effectively presenting it, uh, it's going to get uh, sort of overlooked or forgotten. So you want to make sure that uh, they make an impression. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Southwest Region President David Bishton, uh, CSI, CCCA, uh, again at the Denver meeting, uh, going over some of the different points that we talked about. So that. Uh, uh, that meeting was a, a great uh, session for interaction and uh, uh, what you're seeing today is a, sort of an outgrowth of what happened there today. So let's, uh, let's go on, Maya. And then what chapters need to do is, uh, as I mentioned, present the value of certification every month, whether it be with a joint meeting or not, uh, at least present it to their membership. Uh, provide testimonials either from uh, satisfied owners or uh, other people in the construction industry. Uh, develop presentation on basic contract documents. Uh, we try to, in Indianapolis, at least have one program that uh, we kind of deem our, uh, our certification uh, 
uh, corner and uh, basically just re re-emphasize what the contract documents are and how to handle them and then uh, present occurrences where certification knowledge was beneficial. Uh, and again, I've mentioned that with different uh, testimonials uh, uh, that could be uh, presented. Uh, the picture here is a YouTube uh, member of uh, Sherry Longerbone from CSI, member uh, from Indianapolis. And uh, uh, that's just basically an idea of uh, what, uh, what can be done, not only for, you know, in person, but also electronically. Can that, it can be promoted. All right, Maya. Here's another question. Do you have a chapter certification chair? It's either yes, no, or unsure. I think most chapters do, but we'll find out here. All right, we'll leave it open for another five or so seconds. Okay, thank you everyone. The poll is now closed and you should be seeing. And it looks Here. like I'm right. 100% uh, of our responders said yes. So uh, that's, that's wonderful. I guess what we're trying to say is he needs to step up and maybe be a little more active in promotion than just uh, helping to uh, uh, administer, uh, promote the, uh, you know, teach the uh, various points of the exam itself. So uh, that's really our, our message here. Okay, Maya. Thank you for those responses. All right. Um, just another reminder, if you have any other, other questions, you can put them into the chat box. Like you're covering everything. Um, we'll check back in with questions in a little bit. All right. Anytime you're ready, Maya. Oops. Should be there now. Sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah, some little technical problem there. I believe there should have been a question thing, but uh, maybe that's if we passed over that. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure that there are there are questions that we try to answer. This is uh, that's the end of the second part, and this is the, uh, uh, the third part: providing programming resources to chapters by David Allen Willis, CSI, CDT, BS, CCCM, uh, and that's a picture of David uh, again at the Timber meeting. So, uh, Maya, next slide, thank you. Uh, the objectives here is to increase the quality of programs providing learning units uh, at chapter meetings, to create a region speakers directory, to populate the Institute Speakers Bureau from the region speakers directory. Now, in talking to different uh, region leaders, I believe some regions do have this in place, but many do not. So as far as the speaker's director, the region speaker's director, so that's really what we're, uh, partly what we're trying to establish here today. But again, the, the most important is to increase the quality of programs to provide the learning units at chapter meetings. And it's not saying this, but also to increase uh, the uh, attendance at meetings and hopefully lead to uh, increase in membership uh, of the people that are at the meetings. So, uh, Maya, next, next one. To achieve the objectives, again, we're comparing the, the quality of the fiscal year 12 chapter programs versus uh, fiscal year 13 programs by using the available chapter annual reports, as I mentioned earlier, for certification. Chapters to report on successful programs to region's program chair. Uh, which each region should have a programs chair, so that's really who the person is, is maybe being a little more active than he is currently, or she, her or she, uh, him or she, and then regions to develop the speakers bureau if none in place currently. Uh, and I believe some regions, I don't, the Great Lakes 
that I'm a part of has something like this. So I think this is something we need to create and get it going. Uh, so that's our objectives, uh, Maya. And we have another question. Does your chapter have a speaker's bureau or a directory? Right, thank you everyone. The poll is now closed. Uh oh. There we go. As I suspected, uh, it looks like only six percent say yes. Uh, the the majority is no. It's sixty three percent and unsure 31 and I would really sort of lump that in with no <laughs> uh, so uh, I would say that we have our work cut out and it's uh, something that uh, uh, I believe we need to take the banner uh, especially the, the uh, region program chairs to uh, try to populate this uh, and we'll, we'll go into that but uh, thank you Maya okay so what regions need to do, and this is the program chair, region programs chair's activity, is to contact the chapter chairs to promote getting good programs listed on a region speakers bureau website. Uh, again, from those annual reports, uh, and you, you know you don't have to wait for those reports either. Now uh, they usually come out at the end of the fiscal year, but uh, there's no no reason why you can't. Uh, update the region uh, program chair either monthly or quarterly uh, just to tell them what's going on in your chapter. Uh, same thing here to make sure that the quality program presenters are then passed on to the CSI speaker directory and uh, that's a link to the uh, uh, where that is on the on the website. And the picture that you see is Mitch Miller FCSI CCS uh, he is one of the presenters that uh, has been uh, well known as a, a great presenter uh, and uh, he, he really good, gets into what he's presenting as you can see by the hard hat, the tool belt uh, and uh, he really uh, he really knows uh, knows his stuff so all right next slide and then what chapters need to do as a chapter program chair activity is to work together with the region chairs to get quality programs reported so they are available to all chapters. And then the program chairs to visit the Speakers Bureau uh, speakers Bureau website for quality programs. Now, just a word about what is a quality program. Uh, I think we're looking for something beyond the lunch and learn. And Maya, I think we can go ahead to the next slide. There we go. Uh, we're looking for something really beyond the lunch and learns. Now they have their place, uh, but I think we're looking for something that uh, is different and uh, and memorable. So think outside the box. Uh, personal development programs are always popular and, and many times it doesn't have to be a CSI member or even a, 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 a product rep or whatever. It could be a, 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 a different uh, motivational speaker or someone like that to uh, and, and it doesn't even have to be construction related but something to help uh, the people's attendings uh, well-being uh, controversial programs uh, are always uh, good uh, I know in Indianapolis we we had one a couple years ago where we had the, uh, the a representative from the cast stone Institute and we also had a representative from the uh, Stone Institute and uh, that uh, uh, led to some interesting dialogues there so uh, that's that's the kind of thing that uh, you want to try to get if you can and hopefully with the Speakers Bureau 
you can find out who's presenting these kind of programs so that you can uh, find out how to get them to your chapter or region. And then contractors versus architects, essentially uh, uh, this not really necessarily controversial, but at least it's, uh, and usually this is like in a panel discussion, uh, what is a contractor doing in the next one, 11th hour bid? What's the contractor trying to do at this point versus the architect uh, with addendums and uh, how that's handled? Uh, again, it's, it's an informative and uh, I think something that uh, people take away as uh, uh, helpful. Um, the next one on the list is the mock trial. We did this in Indianapolis about a year ago. Uh, we have a member who's an attorney. Uh, who actually took a real case law and uh, made it generic, uh, but we actually had a real judge with a long flowing white hair and uh, judge judicial robes, and uh, we had a, a defensive attorney, uh, a uh, prosecuting attorney, uh, so it, uh, and we had expert witnesses, so it made for an interesting evening. And uh, I think that's also very uh, informative. Uh, building tours are naturally very uh, 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 great when you have them available. Uh, this is a picture of a North Central Region tour. Uh, and I don't know, John, can you comment what this might have been a tour of? I don't know if John can join us here or not. I just got on. It was down in Kansas City, and I can't remember the name of the building. Okay. Well, it looks like a very interesting one, but obviously uh, the uh, the tours take a lot of effort uh, to organize. Uh, first of all, it usually helps to know a construction manager uh, who's uh, uh, involved with the project uh, that you're wanting to tour. Uh, usually, the tours take place uh, later in the day. Usually toward the end of the work day. Uh, but of course you see that everyone here has hard hats on, usually hard uh, soled boots and, or shoes, uh, maybe even safety glasses. Uh, you know, some precautions, uh, uh, straightforward precautions to make sure that everything works. And uh, it, it just takes a lot of coordination uh, so that uh, it's least disruptive to the project and also the safety of the people taking the tour, but always very, very memorable. And then finally, product manufacturing tours. Um, this is uh, actually going to a product manufacturer and touring his plant. Uh, I know I've heard uh, a block plant. We, we went through that just uh, a couple weeks ago in Indianapolis. We went through a metal fabrication plant. Uh, fascinating. Uh, technology and, and, uh, and they actually had a full-sized uh, uh, whatever they were working on it's actually sitting in their shop which will be a great addition to our uh, downtown park uh, but it's just uh, something that uh, again you remember those kind of things and that's why we're, we're saying in all and these things need to be memorable uh, to attract people uh, and the more you attract people, chances are more of them may feel inclined to join. So it's all it's all connected. Okay, Maya. Um, as I said, programs should be interesting, educational, and of course fun. Um, you'll you'll notice the picture here. <laughs> this again was from Denver. Um, these are various uh, board members that uh, were taking part in this skit. That's actually Lane Booker, our institute secretary, with the uh, the blue smock and the tongue sticking out as a patient. And uh, Casey Robb is our incoming uh, president-elect uh, as one of the doctors. Uh, so there's uh, it just basically they were trying to make a point, you know, the patient may be dying, but he's not dead yet. And just what is it to recoup what he needs to have to make him better? So that uh, that's part of what we're saying is is fun. Uh, obviously, uh, you know they don't dress this way all the time, but it's uh, it's something that makes a point. 
uh, programs need to cater to product reps as well as design professionals. And I, I think this is a great point. Um, it, it, it's something that uh, a lot of pro, uh, programs may be aimed at the architects in the group, because you know you uh, uh, there may be uh, that percentage of, of the membership that are architects, but there's also product uh, representatives also, and uh, this is actually an opportunity uh, for them not to be a competitor, but actually a colleague uh, that will. Uh, uh, benefit from what's being presented. Usually it's a product that they don't deal with, so they learn just as long uh, as well as the architects in the room too, or engineers or whoever else. Uh, and then finally, provide AIA CHA, you know, uh, LEUs or continuing ed credits. Uh, this takes someone, uh, some registration with AIA itself, uh, to, and then you have to send a description of each program that you have um, to them to, uh, to make sure that it's registered so that you can offer the uh, credits that uh, are available. And uh, sometimes this is the program chair, uh, sometimes the education chair, which in some chapters is the same person, uh, or even a separate person is the uh, continuing ed chair. So. Uh, it, it could be uh, uh, any of those, but the point is make it available. Make it an incentive to bring people in uh, as, as a way to satisfy state licensing requirements or other requirements that they may have to follow. Okay, Maya. And here we have questions. Uh, I'll invite uh, David uh, to uh, David Willis to uh, join us if there are any questions. Well, I'm right here. Uh, go right ahead. <laughs> All right. Remember, you can submit those questions right there in the in the chat box. And if you think of something later, we will have um, everyone's contact information. So don't be shy now. But if something comes up later, you can always um, ask those questions. This is Ray Gaines. Um, the um, uh, the thing that we should probably also uh, emphasize when uh, publicizing the programs and having them uh, appeal to a large, uh, uh, a broad spectrum of the uh, industry is, in fact, that our uh, is the diversity of our institute membership, um, because uh, because. We certainly can learn from one another. Uh, as an architect, I don't know everything there is to know about construction, um, but I do know people that I can ask questions of. So, uh, uh, so make it a point. Uh, make it a, make it a point to promote the diversity of our membership. All right. Uh, thank you, Ray. I believe that's a that's a great point. We are of a diverse group, uh, and, and we you know we mentioned architects, engineers, contractors, product representatives. Uh, we also have building owners, uh, construction managers, uh, lawyers, as I've mentioned. Uh, so there's there's a lot of different hats that people wear that belong to CSI because they see the the common good and. Uh, for the construction industry. Yes, uh, yeah, I was inter this is David Willis. I was interrupted uh, a few minutes ago, so I didn't hear everything. But uh, on programs, it's very important as a product rep for myself that some of these programs are not always about products. Uh, interesting things that you will attract your product reps to. Uh, usually, a product rep doesn't want a, of a concrete mason doesn't want to go hear about tor floor tiles, for instance just as an example. So that's why those out-of-the-box um, programs are kind of interesting for, for especially for product reps. I just had a question come through about um, using the online prep webinars, uh, whether they, you can use them for either the fall or spring exam. And um, the answer to that is yes. You can definitely um, use the, the ones used this fall in preparation for the spring exam.
and the fact that they're on demand, I believe uh, you can uh, go to them at any time, uh, and and they do they are very helpful. Uh, I, I do know also that the uh, chapter uh, prep courses also are very helpful uh, because of the interaction between that instructor and those class those uh, those students. Uh, I've been a part of uh, our classes here in Indianapolis, and it's amazing how many people say that uh, uh, you know I know all the information's here in the book and. Uh, in all these different guides, but if it hadn't been for your uh, study sessions, I don't think I could have passed it. So I think it is a very uh, great, uh, great resource. And Jack, this is Dave Willis again. Uh, I know that in uh, the Fresno chapter uh, uh, classes that we do for the CDT, that we invite uh, those that have the CDT to help mentor in those classes. And so we'll usually have at least two CDTs in class uh, when they're going through the PowerPoints uh, in the program. So that really helps also. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Oh, there is our uh, contact mm -hmm. information. Uh, again, uh, this was put on by various region leaders. Uh, uh, John Rickard. FCSI, CCS, AIA Lead AP, the North Central Region President, and that's his, his email link. Uh, David Willis, CSI, CDT, West Region President, uh, and that's his email link. And then Raymond Gaines, FCSI, CCS, AIA Director, Middle Atlantic Region, and that's his email link. And then my email link and name is Jack P. Morgan, CSI, CCS, CCCA. AIA, INCARB, SKIP, the Great Lakes Region, President elect. We're all happy to uh, answer any of your questions now or later. Uh, again, these uh, these questions, these links uh, should get us uh, right there. And then, of course, you can always uh, contact uh, the CSI's professional development team. Uh, Erica Smedley Cox is the director, and that's her contact uh, information. Uh, Maya Nayeth, who's helped us here today, is the education manager, and that's her contact information. Uh, Jennifer, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Antiporta. Thank you. Uh, is the certification manager for CSI, and that's that's her contact information. Deborah Tyler is the professional development coordinator, and then there's someone that isn't listed here that I would like to thank you for all her efforts, and that's our own Joy Davis. Uh, she has really helped uh, you know, the graphics of this and just you know, encouraged all of us to uh, present what we're doing here today. So again, a word of thanks for, for Joy. So thank you for your hard work. Uh, your hard work creates the CSI experience, and I believe that's very, very strong. Uh, and we believe that uh, if we promote the CSI uh, certificate, the CDT exam, and get more people to sit for it, and then also present quality programs. I think we will help that CSI experience. Uh, CSI thanks you for joining us today, and a special thank you to our speakers, Jack, Raymond, John, and David, and the rest of the CSI leadership team.